Oh, hello there. Today I have a tale for you of a hero on a quest who's beset on all sides by many trials and tribulations. And although ultimately he's unsuccessful, he learns that sometimes the journey is more important than the destination. So come with me to a strange and enchanted place in the backwoods of North Carolina. Okay, so for those of you who made it through the corny little intro there, I just wanted to share kind of a funny story with you of something that's happened since I got back, and it is gaming related. Now I know in my last video, I believe it was, uh, you saw downstairs I had sort of the arcade machine set up. I'm going to redo all of that, um, they're actually not even going down there anymore, but I can, I can update you on that later. And I was thinking to get at least one classic machine, mainly because I'd like to have the four-way joystick, and that way I could do, you know, Pac-Man is Pac-Man, um, uh, Donkey Kong, those kind of things that really don't work with an eight-way. But at any rate, I looked around a little bit when I first got here to see if there are any machines in the area, because when I was visiting one time before, there was a Pac-Man and a Miss Pac-Man uh, going for, I think, $150. And they both worked. I mean, they were in the best condition, but still, it's, you know, kind of steal for those two machines. So I looked around and I found an ad on Craigslist for a Miss Pac-Man and a Gallag machine for $200. And honestly, out of all of the old machines, uh, Miss Pac-Man, Galaga, and Robotron are, you know, those are the ones I would get anyway. So I was like, this is going to be great. Uh, they looked in reasonably good condition. I checked the address on uh, Craigslist and <laughs> it looked like it was uh, sort of like storage building. So I was like, oh, well, someone's got it in storage. So I text the guy and he's like, oh yeah, you know, you can come out and look at them. And it was outside of Waynesville, which is about a 40 minute drive uh, from where I live. So I went after work one day and I drove out there and I get out there and it's sort of like, it's not even in Waynesville, it's like in the middle of nowhere. And I'm thinking, well, you know, not a big deal. So I drive up to this place and I realize that he doesn't uh, have them in the storage facility he lives in the trailer park behind the storage facility. And when I say trailer park, I don't mean mobile home community. I mean trailer park. This is like, this is where you go to buy meth. So I was a little nervous and I call the guy as I'm pulling in. And uh, I was like, yeah, I, I think I'm here. And he goes, all right, why don't you pull her on around? It's number 128, and uh, there's a blue Subaru out front. You can just uh, pull up here, and you can leave the truck here if you want. We can ride up to the barn. And I was like, oh, what, what have I gotten into? I'm going to ride up to the barn? So, <laughs> I, was, I was thinking at this point, like, I, like, I'm walking into, like, a deliverance situation here. So I drive up to the place, and there, like, there are cats everywhere around this guy's trailer. I mean, everywhere. And, you know, not necessarily a bad thing, but a little strange. And I'm thinking, like, who has two arcade machines in a trailer? Um, and so I'm thinking, okay, well, also, I guess, you know, who, who lives in a trailer and also has a barn? So... At any, rate, at any rate, you know, I'm just kind of generally confused, and I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm just not going to get out of the truck. So I pull up, roll my window down, and I wait and wait and wait. And he finally comes out. He has no shoes on, 
and his feet are like deformed. And you know, I don't generally like make fun of people with any kind of uh, disabilities or anything like that. But I was, you know, in the context of all this, I'm going, oh my god. So he comes up to the window and he starts talking and. As my sister put it, um, this guy had some real issues. <laughs> so, after talking to him a bit, it became apparent to me that he probably, he told me he his feet were messed up because of chemical burns. Uh, and it was a little uncomfortable to wear shoes and that's why he was walking around with no, no shoes on. Um, I don't mean to, you know, judge the guy, but I, you know, chemical burns, come on. So anyway, uh, so he's, he's like, you know, he's like, oh, well, you can just follow me up to the barn. Uh, the machines are in the loft. And so I'm really thinking, like, I'm, I, dude, I'm getting chopped up. I'm just getting chopped up. There's no question about it. How would you even get arcade machines into the loft of a barn? So I was like, all right, so I'm following this guy. And we must have passed, like, 35 barns on the way to this barn. And we just, every time we'd go around a curve, we'd be like, oh, well, maybe, no, oh, no, not that bar. Oh, maybe it's this bar. No, no. So we finally get to the barn. I start to feel a little bit better because we pull up and he sort of points for me to, to go in. And the place where he wanted me to park, uh, the barn was actually built into a hilltop. So the loft was accessible from ground level. So it started to make a little more sense, you know, how they, how they got the machines in there. And he's like, oh, I'm just going to run up to the house and get the keys. And he drives up there, and it's like this really nice house. And there's like a kid out on this like manicured lawn, like driving around in a golf cart. And so I still can't figure out what this guy who I'm talking to has to do with this house or this barn or these machines or anything. Um, and he comes back and turns out that his dad owns the house. Uh, co-owns the barn with the neighbors and it's it's his dad's machines and you know this guy uh, has a family too and his dad told him well if you can you know if you can sell them you can keep the money it's not a big deal I just need to get them out of here um, but unfortunately in the time between when he put the ad up and when I came out there the father had sold machines to the neighbors who co-owned the barn so <laughs> after all of this um, he's like, well, maybe, you know, you can just go over to the neighbors. He's like, I don't even know why they'd want them. So you can just run it, run over there and talk to them and see if maybe they want to sell. Them. So I go over there and I talk to a lady and apparently they bought them for their kids who she said were kind of excited. And I'm like, well, I don't, you know, I don't want to be, I'm not trying to be a jerk. It's that he just told me to come over and talk to you guys. So, um, she took my number and said, you know, if they decided to sell them at some point, they can make a call. Uh, and of course I haven't heard anything from them. And it's just as well because, to be perfectly honest, I've decided to hold off on any more machines right now. Get the ones I have exactly the way I want them. Uh, we're going to be doing some shifting around here. Uh, and so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get to more of that in a separate video. So uh, anyway, the story's not quite finished yet. So I, uh, <laughs> I leave, you know, this area and I'm going back on I-40, coming back home, and I'm about in the Canton area, and I'm just driving along, and <laughs> all of a sudden, the right rear tire on my truck explodes. I don't mean like it just went flat, I mean like it just blows out. And, I mean the whole, the whole side of it just, just was shredded. I mean, it was ridiculous. And it was all I could do to keep control of the truck and get it off the interstate so that I could get the tire changed. And it's probably just as well I didn't have uh, arcade machines in the back because that would have been a disaster. So I, when that happened, I just sort of was like, you know, like, maybe, you know, the universe is trying to tell me that I need to, you know, need to hold off on this for a bit. So I'm out there changing the tire and uh, I get the tire changed and it was you know it gave me a little bit of trouble and I didn't you know I didn't know where the spare even was and how to get to it and so I had to sort of figure all that out 
And so I get the tire changed, seems like it's gonna be all right. And I had gotten the truck down off of the jack and I was just going around tightening the, the lugs one last time to make sure, because I was like, that's all I need is for this spare to fall off on the way home. And all of a sudden I hear a guy's voice and I look up and my passenger door was open. So I see this guy's head over the top and he says something about, you know, oh, you know, this is something about safety or something like that. And I was like, oh yeah, sure. And I'm thinking like, oh, well, he's just a, you know, passing motorist, just trying to be friendly, stop and, you know, uh, offer some help if he can. And uh, so I get up and I walk up to the pastor's door and the guy's still talking and he's, and then and he's like, is this your hat? And I looked at him and I was like, and he just had like a hat in his hand. I was like, no. And I realized at this point that he's slurring pretty significantly. So then I look up and I realize this guy doesn't have a car. He's just out walking along the interstate. And I mean, he didn't, he didn't appear to be homeless or anything. I mean, he was dressed normally and looked like he'd bathed recently and all that sort of thing. But yeah, he definitely did not have a car on him or with him. And so, so he keeps starting into these like various stories and I'm not sure exactly what he wants, but you know, he'll start into, so oh, Asheville is, is, is a great place. It's the greatest, the greatest city. Let me, look, wait, let me get to the point. Let me get to the point. And every time he would start like a new story, he would have to try to get to the point again. And I don't know what the point was that this guy was trying to get to, but he was not getting to it. So I'm just sort of like nodding. I'm like, oh yeah, sure, yeah. And I'm, you know, like starting to put things away. And I had a block in front of the, the left, uh, the driver's side front tire, which you're supposed to do if you jack up uh, the other side of the truck, you're supposed to block the other one. So I'm walking around the front of the truck and I reach down and I get the block out and my, my dad calls my cell phone because I had called him to you know let him know I'm maybe stranded out here if I can't figure out how to get the spare out you know because uh, he's a car guy so it's like you know maybe maybe he could uh, uh, come out and assist if I couldn't couldn't get everything together because I wasn't even sure there was a spare but at any rate uh, so my dad calls just to you know make sure everything's cool and. <laughs> I just picked up the phone and I was like, hey dad, can you hold on a minute? And I threw the block in the truck, just got in and drove, drove off. And I looked back in my rearview mirror and I saw the guy and he just sort of looked and he was like, and just kept walking. So I don't know if maybe, you know, maybe his wife threw him out of the car because he was drunk in the middle of the day or what the deal was. But yeah, it was quite a trip. And, you know, it's just sort of like a, hey, welcome, you know, welcome back to North Carolina. Let's go out to the boonies and meet up, you know, meet up with a bunch of rednecks. So, uh, anyway, I'm happy that I survived. I didn't get chopped up. So that was kind of nice. And, uh, like I said, you know, I decided that maybe now's not the time for new machines anyway. I had a little bit of work I, I want to do on the machines that I have, so I'm going to do that. And, uh, yeah, I'll keep you guys updated on how everything's going. So... Hope you like my story. Um, let me know if you guys have any have any sort of funny stories of just running into crazy people while you're doing any kind of gaming kind of things. You gotta leave a comment. Video response would be awesome if you guys have some funny stories of, of this sort of nature. Even if it's not gaming related, everybody likes stories of people running into crazy people. So I suppose that's all. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you guys are all doing well, and I'll see you next time.